Hello, everyone. This is the weekly, uh, CircuitPython weekly meeting for July 29th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim, and I am sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python that's designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. The CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you'd like to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel as well as the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, except when that coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar which you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. Uh, we'll also send out notifications here in the Discord uh, when there are changes to the upcoming meetings uh, to anyone who has the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. Uh, there is a notes doc that accompanies the meeting and the recording. You can contribute to the document beforehand. The final notes doc it's, uh, will include timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use that document to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. Um, the meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes, depending on how many folks we have. After each meeting, we'll post a link to the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on Discord. Uh, you can check out the pinned messages there throughout the week to always find the latest uh, notes doc if you'd like to add hug reports or status updates for the upcoming meeting. And um, you can do that throughout the week as well. Um, the meeting is held in five parts. The first part will be community news. That's a look at all things CircuitPython and Python uh, on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries in Blinka. That one is a quantitative overview of the entire project. Uh, it's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from our status updates. The third part, and the first of our two round robins, is the Hug Reports section. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things that folks are doing, take some time to recognize awesome folks in our community. Uh, the fourth part, and the second of the two round robins, is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. Take a minute, uh, take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last uh, meeting and what you'll be up to in the next week until the next meeting. And the fifth and final part is in the weeds, which is an opportunity for more long-form discussion. Those discussions can uh, either be stuff that comes out of the status updates, or they can be identified as uh, too long for status updates and just be put right down in the weeds of the notes document. Uh, so that covers how the meeting will go. With that, I will get scrolled back to the community news. I will take a timestamp. Uh, whoops, I will take a timestamp with the correct button. And a timestamp for this. So, uh, community news. Uh, let's see here. Yes, all right. So first item in the community news this week that I grabbed was uh, Arduino is sw to switch from ARM embed to Zephyr real-time operating system, uh, RTOS. Following ARM's decision to stop supporting Embed from July 2026 onward, Arduino has now decided to use Zephyr uh, RTOS instead of ARM Embed for Arduino boards that rely on the latter, including the Arduino Giga, Arduino Nano 33 BLE, Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, as well as the Arduino Pro boards and solutions such as the uh, Portenta, the Nikla, and the Opt. Uh, Opta families. Uh, Arduino plans to re release the first beta of their solutions by the end of 2024 with a rollout for various boards starting in 2025. And there are links here to CNX uh, software and the Arduino uh, website or forms or something. Actually, I can't see for sure. Uh, next up in community news, uh, CircuitPython 9.1.1 was released. CircuitPython 9.1.1 is the latest bug fix revision of CircuitPython. Uh, it's the new stable release. There are links here to the Adafruit blog as well as the GitHub release notes. And the uh, quick version is a couple fixes and enhancements. The, uh, for Nordic, there's a fix for BLE MTU negotiation. Uh, for RT RP2040, uh, there is a fix that's uh, checking on bus IO.UART pins to make sure they're valid before claiming any. And on the SAMD51, specifically on devices with built-in displays, there's a fix in there that allows those built-in displays to initialize and uh, turn on the backlight. Um, next up is uh, MicroPython simulation with Proteus. 
Uh, Proteus VSM for MicroPython provides system-level simulation of an embedded design centered around a processor running MicroPython code. Users de design the hardware directly on a schematic, choose, uh, choosing from thousands of embedded peripherals and placing and wiring them to the microcontroller board. Uh, there are links here to Proteus and X uh, for this project, which sounds super neat. Uh, I will have to check further into that one later because that sounds really cool. Uh, and next up and last of the news items for this week uh, that caught my eye uh, is a game called Checkout Challenge. Checkout Challenge is a shopping trolley racing game made with uh, made for the Adafruit Pi badge with CircuitPython, uh, inspired by popular racing games. Uh, there are links here to Hackster.io and uh, GitHub. And the, uh, the quote from this game here says, with an Adafruit Pi badge I had stored away for a few years, and with the advent of AI uh, accelerating code development and generating impressive artwork, I realized it was the perfect time to start working on this game. Uh, and I will mention briefly, there's a, a really great write-up for this as well. So the game itself looks super cool, but there's also a really in-depth write-up if anyone's interested in uh, writing games more generally for CircuitPython. This is a great item to take a look at for some inspiration. Uh, all of these items and many more were featured in this week's Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter, which is a CircuitPython community run newsletter that is emailed out every Monday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com. Uh, it highlights the latest on Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or projects, edit next week's draft on GitHub. There is a link here in the notes doc for that. Uh, you can submit a pull request with your changes to the draft file. Uh, or if you'd like, you can also email uh, news items to cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. So I will get us started with the overall stats for this week. Let's get the timestamp for that. Uh, overall this week, we had 26 pull requests merged from 18 different authors, which is uh, incredible to see. Uh, there are several names here that are newer or less frequent or maybe just not as familiar to me. Uh, and some of those are uh, E.A. Graham Jr. I think I've seen before, but it's uh, perhaps a less frequent one. Uh, M. Merlin, R.P. Uh, let's see, R.P. Avlik, uh, Vikash, Timeline 8, R.W. Man OS, uh, Andy Bing, uh, Lavoro Jekic, uh, and CH4N uh, SUK3. Uh, apologies if I did mispronounce anything. Um, but huge thanks to all those folks, again, who are um, perhaps less frequent or newer contributors or just folks who have a name that I don't happen to recognize this week. Um, yeah, it's always great to see all sorts of new names popping up in these uh, lists. So thanks to all those folks. Thanks to all of our more frequent contributors as well. Um, for those 26 uh, pull requests, we had uh, five reviewers for them, uh, looking like mostly the same folks uh, for reviews this week. So thanks, as always, to our reviewers. We had 15 issues closed by five people, with another 14 issues opened up by 11 people. Uh, so that's it for the overall stats. And uh, Scott, if you are available, I will pass it over to you to tell us about the core. Sure. Thanks, Tim. Uh, okay, for the core, we had 17 pull requests merged from 10 different authors, which is quite a lot. So thank you to all of them. I won't highlight uh, new names because you've already done that. Uh, we have four reviewers, um, Foamy Guy and is an infrequent reviewer, so thanks, Foamy Guy. Uh, we have currently have 18 open pull requests. We're well under our 25 goal of being on a single page, um, so that's good. We still do have a lot of old ones that we should take another look at. Um, Issues-wise, we had seven closed issues by three people and 11 open by eight. So a good number of people involved, and we're up uh, four. We have 712 open issues, um, so it's growing slightly. Um, we use milestones to track prioritization for Adafruit-funded work on this. Um, so our main focus right now is, um, well, it's kind of on 9.2, but... Um, we have seven open issues on 9.1x, so that's a little bit more than we'd like, but um, we're kind of both busy with big things, um, Dan and I, so uh, we'll get to those soon. Uh, 
Um, but we have other stuff that we're like in the brain space for. So we're not quite working on the 91X issues. Those are kind of the highest priority generally because those are on the stable, the latest stable release. Um, but we've got some big stuff that our brain's already in. We'll talk about that later. Um, we have one issue not assigned to Milestone, so we are keeping up with triage as well. Um, and that's it for the core. All right. Thank you, Scott. Uh, next up, I will tell you about the CircuitPython libraries. This section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, which can be found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Uh, these tend to be either driver libraries that help you interface with a particular piece of hardware or helper libraries that allow you to create your project uh, at a bit of a higher level without worrying about as many of the complex details. Across all those libraries this week, we had seven pull requests merged uh, by seven authors. Um, and uh, there are a couple of uh, names that were newer or less frequent to me, which I highlighted a moment ago, so I won't do again. Um, there were three reviewers this week, again, uh, Dan, Jeff, and Scott. Thank you to you three for doing reviews in libraries. Um, of the pull requests that were merged, uh, most, on the, uh, most were on the new side this week. The oldest one was 12 days. The newest couple were one day. That leaves us with 48 open pull requests. The oldest one is a draft at 711 days. The newest one is uh, at four days, actually. Um, and there, over the past seven days, there were three issues that were closed by two people with one new issue opened up by one person. That leaves us with 860 open issues, and there are 103 of those that are labeled as good first issue, uh, which you would be able to find over on circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is where you should head if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython, uh, particularly with contributing to the code. Uh, on that page, circuitpython.org slash contributing, you'll find a list of open PRs as well as open issues. Um, the, the first place that we tend to point uh, new folks towards who want to get involved is uh, the list of open PRs try to find something in that list that you have got either an interest in or you've got the hardware for. Uh, go ahead and click through to GitHub, take a look at the actual changes in that PR. Uh, if you do have the hardware for it, go ahead and actually try it out on the hardware. Leave a comment there on GitHub letting us know that you took a look and what you found, and if you tried it out, what the results were. Once you get comfortable with that process, we can get you leveled up to leave official reviews on GitHub as well. Uh, once you're ready to actually get started uh, trying to get your hands dirty with some code, you can also take a look at the open issues on that contributing page uh, where you'll find a list of all the open issues. And again, you can click through there to get to GitHub and find out what that issue is about, whether it's a, a bug fix or a new feature or whatever. Um, and uh, again, you can uh, go ahead and actually take... Uh, a try at implementing that um, that change, whether it's a fix or feature or whatever, submit your own PR, um, and then uh, we can get that reviewed and uh, merged in. Um, there are guides for contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. Uh, we have those available on the Learn system, so if you need help with that stuff, we can definitely get you pointed in the right direction. We also have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord who are going to be more than happy to help you get spun up. So we want everybody to be able to contribute, uh, no matter what your background or skill set uh, is, and uh, we're always going to be willing to help someone who wants to, uh, to help the project. Uh, in terms of the library uh, PyPI weekly download stats, this week we had 176,092 downloads across the 331 libraries. Uh, the top 10 list is here in the notes doc if anyone would like to take a look at it. And the updated libraries for the week are NTP uh, image load and then over in the community bundle, the uh, DF1201S. Uh, uh, looks like some sort of driver library. Uh, and with that, I will uh, pass it over. Let me see. Actually, I don't see Maker Melissa in here. So let me take a timestamp first and foremost. And then uh, I will tell you about Blinka here real quick. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, Blinka is the CircuitPython compatibility layer uh, for uh, single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. Uh, in the Blinka world this week, we had two pull requests merged by two authors, uh, myself and maker Melissa, and we had two reviewers on Blinka PRs this week, thanks to Dan and Melissa. There are three PRs that are open. Uh, there were five issues closed by one people with two new issues opened up, and that leaves us in Blinka world with 99 open issues. 
Uh, the PyPI weekly download stats for this week on Blinka are, let's see here, one, uh, no, excuse me, 18,318. The Pi Wheels downloads are 18,147, and we are currently looking at 145 boards that support Blinka. Right. Take a timestamp and tell you about Hug Reports. So next up will be the Hug Reports section. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. Uh, if you're text only or missing the meeting, then I'll read your notes uh, when we get to them in the list. So I will get us started with a timestamp. Uh, Hug Reports for me this week, thanks to GitHub user um, CH4NSUK3, I don't know how to pronounce that, but huge thanks to them. They added support to the image load library for uh, JPEGs. So now you can show uh, images with display I.O. And um, when you want to change from a bitmap to a JPEG or vice versa, you barely have to change any code uh, anymore with this change, which is super cool. Um, thanks to DigiDevin3 for some nice chatting uh, over the weekend on a shared interest in cryptography and old ciphers, as well as uh, for playing through the cipher puzzle game that I shared. Um, I report to Justin for starting the ball rolling uh, initially on all the changes into libraries uh, for switching us over to Rough. Um, hug report to Jeff for fixing the board module uh, in the documentation uh, for the, uh, the docs page on Read the Docs. Um, hug report to Dan for making a new uh, core release this week with fixes for the SAMD 51s that have built in displays as well as some other improvements. And lastly, for me, uh, hug report thanks to maker Melissa for uh, just generally Blinka improvements, maintenance, and learn guides. Uh, I, am fresh, I installed that on a fresh Raspberry Pi this week, and uh, it was super easy to get set up, and it's always just. Uh, really cool to see how much you can do uh, under Blinka. Uh, next up, I will send it over to Dan. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks to Vikash, who fixed some things having to do with rotary I.O., frequency I.O., and count I.O. It uses a special peripheral on the espresso chips, and um, it, wasn't, it wasn't handing overflow when you got above or below 2 to the 16th or negative 2 to the 16th or so. And so they fixed that. Thank you. And thanks to Jeff for some infrastructure fixes having to do with builds and documentation and stuff. OK. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next up, I will read for DJ Devon 3. And uh, after that will be Jerry. So DJ Devon uh, this week says, I report for C. Grover for investigating alternatives to the openweathermap.org and an amazing step-by-step -step playground notes for both uh, NOAA's weather.gov API as well as Adafruit IO uh, plus weather powered up, uh, excuse me, weather power up for CircuitPython. Uh, thanks to Deshipu for uh, his new uh, Ugame S3 board. It looks awesome. I think maybe it's pronounced micro game, uh, which I, is a mistake I always make. Uh, thanks to uh, Foamy Guy Me for an excellent Saturday live stream working on soft keyboard, uh, working on the soft keyboard and Cipher Challenge. I hope it was a rewarding experience learning that someone solved your puzzles as it was for you to create them. Uh, and I can confirm, definitely uh, was really stoked to see that. Thanks, DJ Devin. Um, uh, next hug report for Ann B for an exceptional playground note on MS-DOS disk images. Uh, a hug report for everyone working at Adafruit Industries HQ going through the big transition while moving to a new location and uh, rounding it out for DJ Devon is a group hug. Uh, next up is Jerry N and uh, after that is Scott. Hi, uh, where'd it go? There it is. Uh, yeah, uh, hug uh, to Dan for uh, you're patiently helping me get a new library set up. I'm really rusty at this stuff. And uh, and you, funny guy, for uh, updating the cookie cutter to use Rough. It's a nice new addition. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, next up is Scott. Hello. First, a hug to Dan for another MicroPython merge. A uh, hug to the MicroPython contributors uh, for continuing to improve things, uh, making it worthwhile doing the merge. Uh, thanks to you, Foamy Guy, for filling in on Deep Dive and just wrangling all of the CircuitPython's libraries, all the releases and reviews that you're doing. So thank you for that. And then lastly, a hug to Riley Pavlik uh, for updating the mail map fire file uh, for CircuitPython and the library with upgraded names and updated emails for folks. All right. Thanks, Scott. 
And that is it for Hug Report. So next up, we have the status updates section. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start, and then we'll go through the list alphabetically or as it appears in the notes doc. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be up to until the next meeting. This is also a good opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what folks are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can always move it down to in the weeds. Uh, so I will get us started. Uh, Last week, I updated the cookie cutter uh, repo for using rough instead of pylint in black. Um, I worked on a fix for a couple of display IO drivers that had some issues running under Blinka display IO, uh, made a fix there inside Blinka display IO to add some backwards compatibility. And uh, as uh, noted a little bit ago, uh, set up a new Raspberry Pi and got all of that stuff tested under Blinka display IO uh, on a physical display. Um, I am this morning, or, or today I should say, I've been working through a handful of the original uh, rough PRs that Justin submitted a little while back, uh, doing the final touches to those to move the config over to its own file, uh, to merge up main and resolve any conflicts that have popped up uh, to get all of that stuff ready to go. Um, over the weekend, I tried out the JPEG support for image load, uh, which again is super cool to see. And then lastly, I have uh, I added the ability within the soft keyboard library in order to change layouts so that you can do things like on a mobile phone keyboard where you would switch maybe to like a number keyboard or a symbol keyboard or back to the letter keyboard so we can have uh, some functionality like that with uh, display IO and touch displays. Um, next up is Dan H. Okay, thanks. So uh, as Scott mentioned, I've been working on uh, merging from upstream for MicroPython. Uh, I merged, I merged uh, version 1.22 of MicroPython, and that's submitted as a PR. There are some merge conflicts because I started the merge a couple of weeks ago, and um, there have been some changes there. So I'll fix those, and then PR will run the tests. Uh, but uh, things are looking good. I had compiled this, like a representative board from each port, or more than one in some cases, and was it were able was able to verify that a bunch of things are still working, like BL Wi-Fi is working, BLE is working on the various boards. So it doesn't look like there'll be a lot of debugging to do to get uh, after this merge happens. I also um, annotated even more all the the changes between all the files that we share in common with MicroPython. So that makes it much easier to do merges in the future. They're all labeled with a little tag that says circuitpy-change so that it's really easy to spot when you're doing merges and usually a little explanation. So I'll work on the version 1.23 merge after this is done. And then the other thing to work on is that as there are always bugs, and so there are some bugs that would be nice to fix for 9.1x. Uh, so there's some look. I'm going to look at those eventually. That's it. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is DJ Devon, who's text only, so I'll read. And um, after that is Jerry N. Uh, so DJ Devon this week for status updates says updated my feather weather script uh, that is still using the open weather map 2.5 free API. Even though the documentation says it's deprecated, their 2.5 API is still working as of today. When their 2.5 API does get yoinked, uh, enter, uh, yoinked into the nether, uh, it will break more than a few of the learned guides. Um, started working on an animated font out of curiosity. It works the same way as a sprite sheet, except that it loops through Unicode keyboard characters. The advantage is that you can change the color of any element in an animation frame by changing the font color uh, or other display IO label parameters. Uh, that is something that you can't do with an animated GIF or a sprite sheet. Um, when all other glyphs are detached, uh, the font is four kilobytes. A sprite sheet with the same dimensions is 28 kilobytes. So this is a bit more efficient, it sounds like. Uh, small animated icons are more RAM efficient than sprite sheets. Uh, this is a good trick to keep in mind for RAM constrained boards using the M0 or M4 devices or really just any RAM constrained boards. 
uh, spent part of my Saturday diving into some basic encryption challenges that FoamyGuy set up at cipher.foamyguy.com. While I've learned of the types of ciphers used, I'd never actually got, uh, never actually decrypted them before, solved all four puzzles and got a gold star. Uh, the puzzles were just the right combination of not too easy, not too hard. There weren't any tricks, misdirection, or multiple encryption screams was an enjoyable experience, uh, which is all very great to hear. Thanks, DJ Devin. Uh, next up is Jerry in, and after that is Scott. Um, yeah, let's see. So, yeah, so I tried switching over to use Rough on my RFM library, and uh, with a, a few tweaks, mostly to, to do with how to how to get around those things that were disabled in PyLint, to, to disable them in Rough as well. <clears throat> but overall, it's fairly painless and nice to have that working. Uh, my goal is now, uh, with Dan's help, I'm trying to... to to get my PR out so that I can get this RFM library out for review. Uh, now I'm just fighting with GitHub, and uh, hopefully soon it'll it'll be available for people to play with and comment on. Thanks. All right, thanks, Jerry. Uh, next up in rounding out status updates is Scott. Hello, thank you. Um, if you saw my deep dive on Friday, I'm working on Speak Two Plus. Uh, turns out, which is a protocol for establishing a secure uh, messaging channel uh, based on a shared passcode. Um, this is used for matter when it's doing provisioning or, or commissioning sorts of stuff. Um, so to get onto the network, we've got to be able to take a passcode and produce uh, some encryption keys that each size has. So uh, I think I've written everything, uh, and I need to debug it because it didn't just work. <laughs> uh, so that's where I'm at. Um, it is a short week for me. I'm out Thursday and Friday for a long family weekend uh, with some tide pooling for sure because it's a, a low tide here in Seattle. I think, I don't know, are low tides universal? I don't know. Um, but we have a low tide this weekend. We're going to go look uh, at some tide pools. Nice. And then enjoy. I'll be around all next week. Nice. Enjoy the, uh, enjoy the time in the pools. Sounds like fun. Thanks. Uh, and... Or uh, let's see, next up uh, would be the in the weeds section, which as a reminder is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These could either come out of status updates or they can be identified ahead of time uh, as in the weeds topics. Um, there are no topics currently down in the bottom uh, of the notes. So I will assume we don't have anything for this week and move us along to wrapping up. Uh, so thank you to everyone for, particip for participating. This has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for July 29th, 2024. Uh, thanks to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of the meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available on major podcast services. Uh, it will also get featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which you can visit adafruitdaily.com in order to, to subscribe to that. Uh, the next meeting is uh, scheduled for the normal time next Monday at the usual time, 2 p.m. Eastern time and 11 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, let's see, here we go. The meeting's uh, held on Adafruit Discord as usual, uh, which you can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. If you'd like to be notified about any changes uh, to the upcoming meetings, day or times, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. Uh, and that's it for this week. Thanks everyone again. We hope to see you all next week.